If you were to call me impulsive, you wouldn't be the first. Um, I just watched Mandy for a second time, and uh, I, like I usually do, and sometimes I put my foot in my mouth, but uh, I went straight to Killer Flicks, and I put, after a second watch, Mandy is the best movie of 2018 for me, beating out Infinity War, and I can't see any movie dethroning it. What a masterpiece of a film. The vision, the rage, the cage, the score. Everything is just perfection. And I meant that shit when I said it. Um, hopefully, Halloween makes me look like an idiot. Mandy stars Nicolas Cage, Andrea Risenborough, and is directed by Panos Cosmatis. What is up, guys? I love when a movie just starts really getting a lot of buzz. Uh, especially on social media, and Mandy is one that I constantly kept hearing about over the last week. So I went to my AMC app to see if it's playing at my theater, and it was not. Uh, and luckily, it was playing on VOD, so definitely check it out. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link below so you can go and rent Mandy. Be sure to check it out. It's oh, We're going to get into this review. But before we get into this review, so many things are coming up. As you know, October is fast approaching and it's just a really big month for my channel. Uh, first off, Stream After Halloween uh, premieres in October, uh, October 19th, Stream 3, Season of the Nips, that is coming, uh, I think like the week after. So you can get you a Stream t-shirt in the meantime, so that way you'll be properly dressed for the event. It's going to be a lot of fun. And on the t-shirt, you can see it's got Dave McRae, Cody Leach, myself, and Mike and Jay from We Watched a Movie. And I like how Jay is Dr. Loomis in the middle. Uh, also, just today, I started filming stuff for uh, Road to Halloween 2018 vlog. That is going to be uh, a 10-day venture where I cover something to do with every movie up until the release of the new movie on October uh, 18th is actually when I'm seeing it, that Thursday night. It's not a review. It's, it's going to be me talking about a scene or me uh, going to like Halloween Horror Nights, which I did that the other day for Halloween 4. And I, I went to a haunted restaurant today and that's going to be for Halloween 5. And I'll tie that in. You'll see, you'll see what I mean once the, uh, the vlog airs. And I'm going to see the original Halloween on the big screen on uh, October 7th, and so the next day, that'll kick off the very first day of the vlog. But I've already talked too much, so let's get into Mandy, this movie, wow. Now, what I said at the beginning, I right now I meant that shit, because you, you guys all know how I feel about The Crow, right? The Crow is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's number two in my list behind Halloween, just because of how much of a visual stamp that movie is. Uh, by Alex Proyas and Brandon Lee's performance in that movie is everything to me. This is one of those movies where I feel like in a few years I'm going to be constantly thinking back on it uh, like I have done with The Crow over the years. It's just, as you know, I love directors that have something to say with the camera, you know, and uh, Panos Cosmatos really is one of those directors like Dario Argento. You know, there are scenes in this movie that have like a Suspiria vibe to them because of the way he plays with the colors. You know, he's not content with just giving you a straight up uh, in, in the frame scene with nothing special. And that's fine when directors do do that. But I like a director that's really got something to say in more ways than one. And this is one of those movies. First off, uh, let's get into the plot. This is a revenge story. Uh, this is really the year for revenge movies. We've had uh, Upgrade. We've had Revenge. And I got to give a shout out to Mother Mayhem because she reminded me that Upgrade was a revenge story. And then we had Peppermint, which was a dumpster fire of a movie. Really bad. And then we had this. So three out of those four movies are cream of the crop in my book. I mean, all I, I love Revenge, I love Upgrade, and I loved Mandy. I never want to mention Peppermint again. It'll be gone from my memory within, you know, T-minus two weeks. But, like I said, that is the plot in this. Uh, you have this drug-infested, uh, LSD-using team of crazy guys. 
Think Charles Manson. That's what the leader of this group reminds me of. You know, it, this whole group, in the best way, uh, feels like the Manson clan because we've seen stock villains in movies a, a hundred times. It's hard to create really memorable villains. There's a couple reasons why these villains are so memorable. Uh, one is just the way the, it's directed. Uh, you know, it, it's almost like uh, dreamlike in the execution of this. The way that uh, Panos chooses to uh, have these scenes unfold. You know, you're going to get like Nicholas Winding Refn uh, vibes from the way this first like 45 minutes pans out. You know, up until Mandy, who is Nicholas Cage's significant other. Uh, I won't say what happens to her because I don't want to spoil anything. But because of her, Nicolas Cage, uh, known as Red in the movie, goes on a war path of vengeance. And we're going to get to Nicolas Cage in a second. Because boy, do we got some shit to talk about. But I have to mention the leader of this group, played by Linus Roach. And if, you know, he was one of those actors, I was like, where have I seen him from? And he was in Batman Begins, actually. He played uh, Bruce Wayne's father. And his performance in this really a standout. You have Nicolas Cage, you have and uh, Andrea Risenborough, and Linus Roach. This is a character actor that we've seen in hundreds of things and it just reminds you how valuable character actors are because when they have to step up to the plate and you know take front and center, more times than not they really deliver and he does in this movie. Now of course he is backed by that masterful direction as is Nicolas Cage, uh, I will say, uh, of Panos but Still, you, you got you to come to work that day and you got to deliver the performance, and he does in space. There are scenes that are downright uncomfortable in this movie, uh, and they involve uh, his character. Okay, um, let's get down to brass tacks. Nicolas Cage is a bright and shining star in this movie. Immediately, I was thinking of Mickey Rourke and you know how his career is uh, just so like stained along the way because of you know issues he's had in the past and and his career is different than Nicolas Cage but you can say that Nicolas Cage has made some wrong career choices along the way but he is one of those actors that you know he's a great actor so when he does turn in a, a great performance in a movie like Mandy then you know it's going to deliver because even when he does those B movies he's still Nicolas Cage he still does a great job but in this you know, this is a character, Red, that you know, loves his wife unconditionally. You know, they have this really strong bond with each other. And once he goes on his war path, there are scenes in this. There's, there's one scene uh, where it's just like one take. The camera just sits there. Red comes into this bathroom and he is just reacting to everything. And the camera does not cut. And it feels like a good maybe five minutes. But Nicolas Cage goes through so many emotions in this scene and really sets himself apart from good actors. This is a great actor. This is one of the best in his game. You know, when you think of De Niro, when you think of Marlon Brando, when you think of, you know, these titans uh, that, we, you know, we just barely even say their name and automatically you just get chill bumps. I got that when I watched his performance in this movie. He really just goes on a full assault emotionally, physically, in every way imaginable in Mandy. And by the end of this thing, you are elated and exhausted, but in the best way. Also the score by Johan Johansson, rest in peace. The guy died, but he left us one of the better scores that I've heard in quite a few years. Um, Strong Devil's Candy vibes, uh, just in tone, because, you know, Devil's Candy was a movie that was based around, like, heavy metal. This has heavy metal vibes to it, but it's, it's, a, it's more epic sounding. His fist closed around the serpent's eye. Strange and eternal. You know, this movie is a, like, a Nicholas Winding Refn movie in hell. And Johan Johansson's score marries up to it i mean just perfectly and there are, there's beauty in some of the scenes and then there is just chaos in some of the scenes but it's it's like an experience the whole movie 
is really complimented by his score. So good that after I actually had to go on YouTube and I wanted to just listen to the score. And I think when a score does that, because rarely do I ever go and listen to a score on YouTube after, uh, you know it's, it's a phenomenal score. Also, there are some lighter moments throughout, just very few, but uh, you know, you got this really strange commercial called Cheddar Goblin. It's, it's like a brand of macaroni and cheese, and I just had to mention it in this review because it was hilarious and strange and, and weird, and, and I just loved it. Now, uh, I will say, it, it's funny, because I just posted that on Facebook, and there were a few people on Killer Flicks that were like, I didn't like this movie at all, and I completely understood that. My wife did not like this movie at all. She hated it, as a matter of fact. It's not for everybody. It, you can use that ugly word polarizing with it. The first 45 minutes are kind of slow moving. You know, I th within like 10 minutes, you know what type of movie you're getting yourself into. And you either will participate in the ride or you will completely check out. And for those people that check out, they're done. But uh, for me, I was, I was there. And especially after I watched it the second time, that first uh, 30 to 45 minutes, really needed to be there because this is the the section where we're building up our our villains and we're building up um red and mandy's relationship so everything that happens once once it goes into full assault mode you have to have that that beginning there it just gives it that much more weight once uh you know it kicks into high gear oh and by the way the weapon of choice that uh, red uses in this movie is so badass like I would put it up there with the chainsaw that Ash Williams uses as well as Jason's machete you know you want your hero to have like the most badass weapon ever and the weapon forged by Red in this movie will go on sale at Hot Topic within the next couple of weeks guys I'm giving this movie you guessed it a freaking trap on an island to me it's the best movie of the year there is nothing that can beat it it dethroned Infinity War for me just because of how much of an experience it is. And I want you guys to check it out immediately if you haven't seen it. So please click on that Amazon link and watch this movie as soon as you can. I would say if you like movies like The Crow, then there's a good chance that you're going to love this. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for all Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dumb out.